You're correct. It's the defense motion. Anything to add for us? Yes. I guess, no, just to reply to whatever the state's response is. Okay. We did have a discussion about this motion before the lunch hour, and Mr. Martinez, you indicated you still intend to go into these areas. Is that correct? Right. He has indicated that he began work on this back in August of 2012, and when he worked on this on 2012, one of the individuals that was with him was Mr. Neumeister. In speaking with Mr. Neumeister, or not speaking, in the testimony that he provided you, and then also in the interview, he indicated that the conclusions that were reached were reached in conjunction with Mr. Sudanen, so I believe I can ask about that. Okay. Judge, the thrust of the motion was about the fact that these work drives have nothing to do with the actual evidence, and the diagram that's been presented so far under testimony shows that Mr. Smith is testifying about from the 08 drive, which Mr. Neumeister never touched, never had anything to do with because we didn't have access to it at that point. So certainly Mr. Smith's testimony has nothing to do with the work drives, but more importantly, the work drives are just work drives. They are supposed to be torn apart. They are supposed to be dissected. So any questions like that were asked during the evidentiary hearing about files that were deleted or things like that are intended to insinuate that there was something nefarious done with the drives, but those drives aren't the evidence. The evidence hasn't been touched. The evidence is still pristine after it was modified by the state. So any questions, any evidence related to Mr. Neumeister's work drives is only there to mislead the jury to think that something was done incorrectly with the evidence or to confuse the jury about the issues that what's there on the actual evidence versus what's on the work drives that are not evidence, and it's also a complete waste of time. All right. It's hard to anticipate exactly the nature of the question the state may ask about these issues, so I'm going to deny the motion in limine. However, you may object, and the court will rule at the appropriate time. No speaking objections, however, just as to approach. So one of the issues then, Judge, is if Mr. Smith is testifying and he didn't work on these work drives, he didn't use these work drives, I would assume there should be no questions then to Mr. Smith about the actual work drives since he never worked on them. Well, again, I can't anticipate exactly how the state is going to frame their questions, so I'm going to ask that you just object and approach the bench, and we will discuss it here. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? Tomorrow morning we have oral argument on the motion to dismiss. I have it set for tomorrow. I thought it was 1.30. Randy? At 1.30. Okay, 1.30. All right. Is the jury back? And is Mr. Smith back? We can get him, yes, if we're ready to go. Okay. He should probably turn his computer on. Okay. Okay. Mr. Nermey, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, before the lunch break, we were talking about this image of the 08 image of Mr. Alexander's hard drive, specifically looking in the cookies file. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. And do you recall one of the things we were beginning to discuss as well? How do we know in the cookies file that 
that there was evidence of pornography on three, around 3 in the morning on June 1st. And you were about to show us in the cookie file how we can articulate that, or how you can demonstrate that. So if you could just explain that to us, please. Uh, yes. Uh, what we did was we did a search for uh, the links that we had established were on the uh, on the drive. Um, what we were talking about was uh, epoch time, which is this timestamp here in front of the uh, definition of of the cookie. Uh, UTMA, as we uh, explained earlier, is the cookie that's set on the initial visit. Um, converting uh, epoch time over to a, a more legible time gives us an actual timestamp that we can understand. And, we, and if I could interrupt you, Bill, are you doing that when you say initial visit, with all these cleaners and stuff in play, can you say dispositively that June 1st at 3 something in the morning was the first visit, or it's the first proof that there's a visit based on what's on the computer? It's the first visit after, um, a, 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 it's the first visit on record. Okay. And that record prior to that could have been cleaned by one of these. Could, could have been cleaned, yes. Okay. And I'm sorry, going back to this. No problem. So uh, we were looking at the initial uh, UMA, which is the first cookie, um, and uh, we convert the epoch time over, and we can see that converts over to Tuesday, uh, June 1st at 3.44 and 59 seconds. Hey, uh, could you point, point me to where you're? Where sorry, you're yeah. Um, down here in the bottom of this uh, black window. Uh, where it says Tuesday, June 1, 344. That's the uh, conversion there. Okay. And that, again, we're using military time, so we're talking 345 in the morning, military time, regardless of Pacific or, or, or Mountain time. Okay. Uh, or is that is that MST? Does that military time that convert? That's used on Mountain Standard? MST is Mountain Standard time. The computer is in Mountain Standard time, but there is, uh, because of the Arizona time zone, which is a, an odd thing, um, there is a, a, the logs in Windows XP uh, listed Arizona time as MST, but uh, did the addition of the hour or the subtraction of the hour according to daylight savings time. So there's no technical um, MST type of uh, abbreviation for, for Arizona. Okay. Now, uh, can, we, can we tell from this point, uh, well, Going back here then, uh, I guess, can we tell this cookie, you said it relates to pornography, uh, can we tell what website or what area you are articulating says links this to pornography? Yeah, in the uh, cookies.txt file we've pulled from, uh, you, as you can see here, line 631 was the uh, A cookie, which was the uh, first, first visit cookie, and uh, 631 uh, shows that it, that was a cookie uh, given to the uh, machine by uporn.com. Okay. And I see um, true, we see after uporn.com, true slash false. Um, how do we interpret, is that is that something that means something to you, or is that just kind of come with this? Yeah, in, in regards to uh, how the data is overlaid, there's, um, there's definitions to uh, what is uh, beyond that point. Uh, um, true, false is kind of calculations towards how the uh, timestamps will work towards their uh, expirations and things like that, but uh, not really relevant in this case. Okay. Now, before we got into this cookie file, we were talking about uh, the history.dat file, which is the, um, from what we heard this morning, the historical record of, of Firefox, Mozilla browser. Correct. Correct. Okay. Would that be the next place to go in order for you to demonstrate uh, the veracity of this or what we were talking about before? Is there more in the cookie file? Uh, the cookies just uh, show, we just looked at the example of when the first cookie was there. There's a number of other cookies there, and those uh, have the expiration dates, as I explained earlier, for uh, session timeouts and uh, two years for that, that type of thing. So that's pretty self-explanatory that those cookies were all set and, um, and placed there and they point towards the history history file. So would that be the next place to go in order to help explain the, the, the yes, sir. assuredness that, the, that this was human initiated content? Yes, sir. And sir, if you could be so kind as to get us back uh, to that history.dat file.
Uh, yeah, I want to go back a little bit. Uh, can we tell uh, regarding this uh, this visit that we were first talking about on June first around three in the morning? Can we tell what what that is or what he, he watched or saw? Well, the cookie was set at 3.45 in the morning, but there's actually the traffic from the uh, event log was uh, wiped, uh, assuming that it was through the cleaner. Uh, the initial traffic that can be shown in the uh, parsed history file uh, starts just uh, a couple hours later. Okay. A couple hours later. So, uh, now in terms of, I, I want to, before we go on further explanation, um, I want to kind of interpret what we have up here. Uh, what is a URL? Oh, as I explained, the definition of kind of the parsed information from earlier, the ID number gives you a general ID of the record in the log. The URL meaning the uh, address of the website that's being visited. And the refer is, again? The refer is the uh, the link or the website that has sent um, traffic to the current site. As I explained, uh, Google sending traffic to NFL, would, Google would be the referrer in that case. It got to the NFL website via Google. Okay. Now, if, if a virus, we've talked about Z-logs, these other viruses, when a virus puts uh, something on a computer, is there this sort of referral that you're talking about? Uh, not typically. A, a virus will uh, do everything it can, usually to prevent itself from being detected and okay. that type of thing, yeah. Okay. So having a referrer as a data scientist and on forwards email, is that further assurance that we're talking about human-initiated contact? Yes, yeah, seeing that there's a referrer means uh, that there is a step-by-step -step process that's been taking place, and that's not an automated process. Okay. Now, we talk about, we see, I see looking at line 14848, and has a URL, uh, uporn.com backslash watch, the numbers, great body, great sex, great glow job. Uh, do we know what time that particular when this viewing, I see a bunch of right. different uh, so videos here. So the top is the parsed data in, in, in its entirety, and you can see the line number next to those uh, being 1, 2, through 13. And this bottom is a result of a, of a search. So I've parsed this information out to make it cleaner so that we can see these lines. But for each line, if I double click on it, it brings me to that line 14, 945, as you see there. And then from that point, we can see the first visit date, the last visit date, and all those times that correlate to those links. Okay. Now, because it's a log, the oldest data is at the bottom of the file, and the newest data goes to the top. Okay. So uh, we're looking at the oldest visit being the bottom, uh, going upwards in time. Okay. So after this contact at uh, 3 in the morning, that we don't know what he went, then you're saying the next one would have been 14945, this um, good anal perfect low job. Correct. Okay. And do we know as an initial matter, are we looking, is this the the above half here, is this what shows some of the... Some the of top the half is the data, the bottom half is my results that clean up the list so that we can uh, go through each of the lines that show in the lock. Okay. So... In terms of what the data of this hard drive shows you, uh, do we know how Mr. Alexander got to this this uh, uporn uh, video dealing with anal sex? Originally, the referrer going into uporn came from a uh, search engine called Alexa. And you say search engine called Alexa. Um, what is uh, what is the search engine? A search engine uh, like Google or Yahoo or Bing or any of those is a, um, a software online, an online program that uh, allows uh, indexing of information so that you can uh, search for a specific topic. Okay. So in terms of uh, 
the Lexus is the Lexus. Do we know if, if the user simply went in there and typed U-Porn or something, or how did, do we know how they got it? Uh, that's where the, the referrers come in um, and show that from Alexa, the click goes to the UPorn site. So there's a UPorn link on the Alexa, and they followed that through. Okay. All right. So they follow this link through, and I see when we go up, just without getting into detail right now, we see a bunch of referrers. Uh, well, let's, let's, we see a bunch of videos. Can you scroll back down? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so first of all, we see one, two, three, four, uh, by my count, that contain this uh, good anal perfect blowjob. Why is there why is there four lines of this? Of this? There's four ref referrers because um, when uh, the user is on that site, there may be a number of links on that page. Uh, one, uh, you know, let's say four or five, six other links to uh, media or video from that page. So when you see four refers, that means from the good anal and perfect blowjob link, link, they clicked on four other links from that point going further. Uh, uh, further. Four other links that were visible to them while this video on that page yes on that page. okay now the other thing i want to clarify in terms of what your analysis can um, undercover when we see backslash watch uh <coughs> does that mean you can confirm that the user watched this video um as i see the, the watch, the slash watch means they were on a, a streamable video. Okay. So um, I, I can't say necessarily that the, the video was played or streamed, but that, uh, the, the slash watch was a streamable video, meaning, as I said before, there wasn't a down, it wasn't downloaded to the hard drive. Like it wasn't saved as a media file to the hard drive. It was uh, watched online okay. or available to watch online. Okay. So can we... Can we tell from your analysis center, does your analysis tell us, I should say, this URL, uh, good anal and perfect logo, do we know how long the user was on this particular page or, or video? Well, we, we, can, uh, we can come up with those numbers uh, following the referrers and the URLs along the timeline. Okay. If, if we're on the bottom line here, 14.9, uh, 45, we can see that that's at 10:45:18 uh, in the morning. And as we go to the next URL, that's at 10:49:58, uh, uh, which is just a minute later. Okay. So what we see here, when we be looking back at this this chart, then each URL is a new is a new video. A new, a new page, page that has been loaded. Yes. Okay. So we know then that. So we're looking at, I guess, uh, Sunday, June 1st, 10, 10.49.58, uh, the user has switched to this uh, perfect blowjob back, back, or hashtag blindfold, correct? Yes. Okay. And again, we don't know that he watched it. We know it was up on the screen up until the point in time when the next URL comes up. Yes, I can't even say that it was uh, closed at that point, but um, I, it just all I can say is that the, that was when the first visit occurred at that time. You say you said you couldn't say that it's closed. Like uh, that the video was closed after watching it or whatever. Okay. There is no data telling me when it was closed. It could have been left open infinitely from that point. The next URL in this line is just the first time that page has been loaded. Okay, so we see the. Uh, well, let's let's get into this a little bit too. We see that the video has changed, though. We go from the, the perfect blowjob blindfolded to the great body, great sex. Right. Um, is that relates to all that URL? That's the next URL above. Yeah, exactly. The referrers mean that um, those they brought up other pages along the way, and that URL was the first one in the chain. Okay. The next one in the chain. So then what is the next one in the chain? We're at 1049. How much later does the next one in the chain come up? It's 105041. Okay. So we have about roughly a minute, yeah. maybe quite a minute before the next video comes up. 
just that that page was loaded at that time. And uh, so then we have, so we have the great body, great sex video. Is, is that the, uh, well, that's the one before, right? That's the one we're looking at now at, at 1050. Okay. So you highlighted the other I just highlighted one. the next one in the chain. Okay. And the next one in the chain is Soto uh, Brazil. That was, that was another... 30 seconds later or so or less? No, that is um, I don't know, 10, 50, and 11, so 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Yes. So he was, a, just for clarification then, is he on the great body, great sex, great low job 10 minutes, or the sort of Brazil 10 minutes? Uh, it, it, it was 10 minutes between loading the great body page and between, uh, loading the Soto Brazil page. Okay. It was 10 minutes between loading those two pages. Okay. So after he goes to the Soto Brazil page, uh, what is the next URL? And the the hand job lessons that is eleven oh eight. Going back, and how long was he on the Soto Brazil? That's eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay. Uh, and so the the hand the hand job lessons. Uh, we see the hand job lessons in the Soto Brazil is kind of mixed in. Is there an explanation for that? Um, refers. So uh, those being refer links, they're in line, mm -hmm. meaning um, just that, that uh, other links past this in the chain uh, were referred to by the hand job lesson site or the Soto Brazil site. So when we're, we're talking about this and when we're talking about all these youth porn videos, tell me if I'm correct, what I'm envisioning is if he is on a youth, a youth porn page looking at different videos, moving from video to video, and that's why that's the refer? Uh, correct. And so then going up to the next URL, uh, can you highlight that for us? Is that... Okay, there we go. The cute girl giving a hot blow job, that is about five, almost six minutes later, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, going up to the next one, then I guess would tell us, the next URL would tell us how long he was on the cute girl. Uh, so he was on that for about four minutes, four and a half? So less than two, it looks like. Oh, okay. Um, 1356 to uh, 1523. Okay. So less than two minutes, he's on cute girl giving a hot blow job, and then uh, he goes to public blow job. Nice kids, correct? Yeah, just keep in mind that that's when these URLs are when the pages are open. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, other ones were closed. Meaning, uh, and, and you say that, and I think maybe it's, it's good because I probably haven't clarified enough. He's just jumping. It's not to say that he closed down, like when he goes from. Cute girl giving a hot blow job to the next URL, whatever that might be. He's not necessarily closing out of that. He's he's just opening up another. Opening up to another. Okay. Correct. Um, I guess that begins the question then, or if you can tell, I mean, is it would his system allow for him to play two videos at one time, or? Sure, it'd be pretty hard to pay attention to two things at once in that regard, but yes, you could have multiple tabs open for uh, later viewing or that type of thing. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, we were at, I believe, which URL were we? Public blood job, nice tip. Okay, so he was on that from 11.15.23 to what time? 11.21.46 was the next. And that is the... Uh, hot girl fighting with big dick. Yes. Okay. And so we have several minutes on that. From 15, uh, 23 to uh, 21, 46. So almost five and a half, six minutes. And then from there, what is the next URL? Just labeled splits. Okay. And he's on splits. This looks like a couple minutes for not quite two minutes, maybe? Yeah, no, just barely one in a few seconds. And this, uh, did we skip one here? Did we, there, I see one here. Uh, 
the Venus monster? Um, we have the URL here. Yes, I did actually uh, skip that. I'm sorry. That's okay. So this Venus, Venus monster anal fuck machine part 14. That's at 11.26, so we went from 11.21 at Hot Girl to 11.26. Okay. Uh, five minutes. And so he's on, he's on, he's on the, the Hot Girl video for five minutes, and he's on the Monster Anal Fuck Machine video after that. Where, and so then he goes to splits, just to clarify, correct? Yes. So how long is he on the uh, Venus video? Uh, he just, uh, all I can say once again is just that uh, he started the first visit was at 11.26 and the next visit to uh, Splits was at 11.27.39. Okay. So we know that he opened up Splits. We don't know what happened to Venus. Correct. Um, and then the next URL appears to be, well, I see Haley Page. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And... And the page comes along at 11.30.02, so a couple of minutes later. 27.39 to uh, 30, so yes. So about two minutes and 20 seconds. A little more than two minutes, yeah. Uh, and then we go from there to fucking a chick is, we see 11.30.02 to, to 59, so less than a minute. Less than a minute on that. Okay. Uh, and where do we go from there? 3207 to this here. So less than two minutes, or about two minutes? 3059 to 207, so about a minute, a little over a minute. Yeah. A little over. All right. And then uh, our next one is strap on fun, correct? Yes, sir. And that is at 11, so we're talking about 40 seconds. Just a few seconds as well, yeah. All right. And the next hot ass page on the camp. That is? Another minute as well. Another minute. Okay. And then we have a Chrissy Moran, nice ending. Right? Is that the final video? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and that is at 11.36. So... 11.36.08, when do we, when do we know that this session, if you will, that's, that's when the session ended, as near as your research time, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, when did, could you go back uh, and be so kind as to demonstrate when it began, the very first video? That's 10, 10.45.18. So we have roughly 45 minutes or so of viewing the pornography. Correct. Now in terms of the assessment of this as pornography, you didn't view this material, did you? No, sir. You're just going off the UPorn acronym? Yeah, UPorn.com is a known, yes, pornographic site. In terms of, we talked earlier about this issue of modification. Do you recall speaking about that this morning? Yes, sir. Drives? Yes, sir. Now, we've heard about, I'm ready to keep it. We've heard about, going back to my rudimentary, Diagram. We've heard about what the evidence you're presenting today uh, coming from the 08. And that and the 08 image, correct? Uh, the evidence I've shown in, in this case is on all three of those images. All three. Okay. Yes, sir. So, and that goes to my question then, because we talked about the 2400 or roughly modifications that occurred on the 09. Yes, sir. And I want to make sure we understand what happens when, when we say modification. Um, some of us might have a, a belief of what that means, but I think that's probably also a, a technical term in your field, correct? Yes. Okay, so what I want you to do is kind of 
explain what it means when when data is overwritten, as we talk about this computer being turned on and that sort of thing. So I want to kind of make sure that we understand that this pornography isn't a relate, isn't, doesn't relate to modification. Mo modification, um, it, it, it's uh, through the analysis to see what files have been modified, it's, it's uh, fairly easy to compare between the two images. So once we establish those 2,300 files that had been modified from the original image, I can see that none of them relate to the history.dat or the cookies text file, and, and nothing had been altered or changed uh, in terms of those, those files. Okay. Taking a step back, though, what does, what does modification mean? Does that mean files are deleted or overwritten? Does it mean all of the above? Yeah, it could mean all of the above. It just means that something has been changed and after the fact of it becoming evidence. But as you said, since you saw it on all three here, what we just talked about wasn't, wasn't brought about based on your conclusions, based on some sort of change. Is that no, what sir. You're us? no, sir. And in terms of your conclusion in that regard, are we saying the history.dat file and the cookies kind of concur in this conclusion that you draw? The, the cookies uh, file places the original of visit and the subsequent um, uh, expirations of the session, which means uh, if they spent too long on the site, it would have expired at a certain time, and the uh, cookies line up uh, historically with the uh, history.dat file. And the initiation of these contacts through Alexa, um, does that further firm up the idea that this is human initiated contact? It's a referral, so um, I would uh, definitely uh, assume that uh, because there isn't uh, any type of malware or adware that I know that would leave those type of logs or tracks on the way out. Like I said, the malware and, and viruses are, are uh, built to hide what they're doing, so. Now, I want to talk to you about um, something, if you could explain to us, what is a registry? Registry is um, kind of the book, the, uh, in a business, you have a, the book for bookkeeping that keeps track of your uh, income and expenses and things like that. The registry is the same thing for an operating system. It's the uh, storage area or the, uh, the the piece of the operating system that uh, contains the data sets okay. for the operating system. Well, let me, let me try to digest that down a little bit. Um, a registry on a computer, is that going to, if somebody visits homedepot.com, <laughs> is that going, to, is there going to be remnants of that in the registry? Uh, so, sometimes it all depends on um, how they uh, initially tried to visit homedepot.com. Uh, for example, if they used the Windows OS search tool, which would be just a search bar in the operating system itself, and typed in homedepot.com and clicked on it, Windows would force you to go into a browser like Firefox or Internet Explorer to bring the Home Depot site up. So in that case, if they used the Windows operating system to search, then it would show up in the registry. But if they did the search on the browser itself, it probably wouldn't. It would show up in the history.dat file. Okay. Well, if something that is on the registry of a computer, so, so if we went to a browser, and so, for example, we saw some of these websites that we saw. And if we went through a browser, would you expect to find evidence of that on the regist in, the, in the registry file? Um, no, not in that case. So, in terms then, um, trying to understand then, like, what would we see in a registry file? Would it only be those things that were typed in through the operating system? Uh, the registry is a, a, a massive data set. It holds everything from what the windows look like, what shapes they should take, what color schemes they're using, what font sizes uh, they should be using. And it also keeps historical elements like what's been searched in the search bars 
and things like that. So when you try to search for something you've previously searched for, it, um, it kind of auto-corrects or uh, tries to uh, figure out what you're typing ahead of you typing it. Okay. So as it relates, and this is, I guess, where my confusion comes in there, if we see remnants of somebody going to homedepot.com in the register, okay, let's say, just for the sake of our discussion here today, we use computer you see homedepot.com in the register. What does that mean to you? Like I said, if, if there's a domain name like that in the registry, the, the initial search was done within the operating system and a search bar in the OS and not in the browser directly, which can happen. Which can happen. And how does that happen? Uh, just by, um, instead of bringing up Firefox or Internet Explorer and typing in your search or your homedepot.com, you would just uh, bring up the window in Windows and type it in, and it would bring you to Firefox or Internet Explorer and okay. take you from there. And in terms of what's on that registry as well, um, we saw many, uh, you, you talked about different virus programs being on there, and we talked about VLOG, we talked about different virus programs being on there. Yes, sir. Can uh, viruses put information on this registry? Yes, sir. As far as the information that's on this registry, can you make a determination uh, if the information on the registry was put by human-initiated action or the a virus? Uh, yes, for the most part, it depends on which piece of the registry. As I said, it's a gigantic piece of data, data set with lots of data sets within it. Okay. Well, have you... I know you talked about having it for uh, such a short time, but you've done at least had the opportunity to look at the registry file. I have. Okay. And is that something you could demonstrate for us today? I, I could bring what I've found so far up, yes. Okay. You can do that for us, sir. So this is the uh, raw, a uh, raw piece of the registry, and as you can see, there's um, a lot of obscure, uh, random data. Um, what we're looking at here are the fonts that were installed in the machine. So this gives you an idea of all the different things that are uh, stored in the registry, uh, what what the font names were, um, what links are on the desktop, where shortcuts uh, lead to, and things like that. Um, uh, further down here, we have the historical record or the, the history of what was uh, typed into um, the search result. So if we're looking for just .coms, which is uh, what you uh, kind of indicated, then I can just pull up that list to help um, and get through that. Okay. And so what we're seeing here then is the uh, MSN users, Microsoft, these are searches that were initiated. Well, can you tell us, put it this way, um, how can you tell, say, just using maybe line 4162 as an example, how can you tell us, well, that was initiated by a human versus a, a virus? It's within the, um, the history of the Windows operating system search bar. And, and like I said, uh, viruses typically do not uh, log their, uh, their actions, meaning as a virus uh, author, uh, it would probably be the last thing they'd want to do is uh, leave tracks on what their uh, virus is doing and where it's sending you. Is there any evidence that you found? Well, how many do we know? I see. Uh, you know, 3945 and the number keeps going up. Do we have any idea how many files are on this registry? Well, they're not necessarily files, they're just lines. Okay. Um, and at the very bottom of this column, we can see there's 14,170 lines in this uh, piece of the registry. Okay, so now we see right here, like, for example, I see zone 13863, zone of freeform.com. Um, based on what you're telling us, then, uh, a virus wouldn't have put that into the registry. No, sir. This is uh, 
a historical record of where the computer has been. Okay. Can we tell any more? For example, if I went to 13863, can you say, well, it was looked at in this state or this point in time, or would that just not be available? The registry record is not as defined as the history.dat file. Okay. Can you find any other indication throughout this registry file that indicated child pornography? I couldn't say one way or another versus child pornography, no. Is there any other evidence of pornographic terms? Let's see, XXX porn movie, XXX teen film. This list is in alphabetic order, and it's pretty extensive. I can scroll through and give you any examples. Going back to that, you said, well, looking at line 13, 714, XXX teen film. As an example, you told us, well, we can't say that that is child pornography necessarily. Okay. Because you haven't visited there, correct? Correct. Okay. But we can say that someone using the computer initiated that search. These were all brought up, yes, by human interaction. And so can you just keep XXX.com? Can you keep scrolling up? Why don't we go up to the letter C? Maybe that would save us some time. Sure. This is a list of the virus. Okay. Well, before we go on that then, what accounts for virus chalet, virus isolator, things of that virus hunter? Are these, what are these? Are you familiar with these programs or websites? Yeah. This list actually, some of these virus domains, virus for var and virus card, things like that, some of these are legitimate antivirus or malware prevention pieces of software, and others are actual pieces of malware that pretend to be PC cleaners or that type of thing. So this is a mixture of valid virus cleaning and cleaners and malicious software as well. Okay. But this malicious software, are we talking about, in terms of how it gets here, it's not putting itself on there. Somebody is telling us that somebody is searching out for a cleaner, and they wind up with something malicious. Correct. Objection leading. Overruled. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Well, I'm trying to get a little bit of better understanding in terms of you talked about virus cleaners and sometimes they're being malicious software. I'm trying to account for that in here, trying to kind of a more understandable, non-technical. It's obvious that there were a lot of searches for antivirus programs and cleaning software, as the history shows, and that some of those hits turned out to be malicious links that are drawing the user in to install, thinking that they were going to clean their PC, but in fact infecting their PCs with viruses. And other of them, other sites are legitimate antivirus programs. But again, going back to what we said before, these viruses that are getting installed, they don't draw someone to tsex.com. They don't force someone to go there. They could in some cases, but yeah, not the ones that I've seen on the drive. Could we go back up to the letter C then in this? Sure. Kind of offset a little here. There's a couple of sections. There's a section of them there. Okay. So, crazy girls world, things of that nature, again, stuff that was searched. Correct. 
I don't know what any of these domains are. I don't know what the content is on those sites, no. These are all in the history record, yes. And based on your experience in terms of this, in terms of this history record, when someone searches through the system as opposed to the browser, does that tell you anything? Not necessarily. It's all a personal computer behavior. Different people use different search bars, different search tools. But the cleaner, the cleaner still has and have to ask they were running, who was ever running this computer, was interested in hiding their behavior, their web browser behavior. Objection, lack of foundation. Sustained. A human initiated the eraser of all these things off the web browser. Is that correct? There's plenty of evidence to show that, yes, there's a lot of attempts to obfuscate the data and get rid of history and cookies and things like that from the browsers, yes. Thank you, sir. Cross-examination. Sir, one of the things that happened when you took the witness stand is you just took the witness stand and gave us your name. Please give me your name. Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? Yes, you may. You know, she may cross-examine. Well, we started off with the thing that I asked was that you hadn't given your name when you first took the witness stand. What is your name? John Smith, sir. And additionally, sir, you also have a nickname, don't you? You have a nickname, don't you? I use a nickname. Pardon? I sometimes use a nickname, yes. And you use that nickname sometimes in your business, right? No, not usually. You use it in your private life, then, right? Yes, sir. For example, somebody by the name of Brian Neumeister, you know who he is, right? Yes, sir. Objection, relevance. Overruled. He knows your nickname, right? Objection, relevance. Overruled. And you have both a personal and business relationship with Mr. Neumeister, right? Yes, sir. And so this nickname that you used, you said it was mostly a personal nickname, but you do use it in business, is that right? No, sir. Objection as to relevance. Overruled. One of the things that you also, you became involved in this case as a result of your contact with somebody named Brian Neumeister, right? Yes, sir. In fact, he's your client, right? Yes, sir. He contacted you about assisting him in going over to the Mesa Police Department to look at some computers, right? Yes, sir. Amongst other things, that's what you were asked to do, right? Yes, sir. And one of the things that happened is you went in August of 2014 over to the Mesa Police Department, didn't you? Correct. And Detective Flores was there, wasn't he? 
Yes, sir. This individual sitting here was there, right? Yes, sir. And one of the things that happened on the first time that you went there, when you tried to look at the Toshiba hard drive, you looked at, you tried to look at the Toshiba hard drive, right? I didn't try. I looked at it. You looked at it and you tried to gain entry into whatever information it had, right? Um... I didn't try to gain entry into the information, no. You couldn't get into it because you didn't bring the right adapters, right? That's correct. So you looked at it and you said you didn't try it, but you were there for a purpose, right? Yes, sir. You were there for the purpose of getting some information from some hard drives, right? Yes, sir. And the uh, Presario Compact laptop, that has a Toshiba hard drive, right? Yes, sir. So when we talk about Toshiba hard drive, we're talking about the same computer as a Compact Presario laptop. Right. Objection, misleading. Overruled. Uh, in this case, yes, but not always. I'm not asking about any other cases. Okay. I'm asking about this case. When we say Toshiba hard drive, we're talking about the one that was in the compact Rosario laptop, right? Yes, sir. And you went the first time there, and you didn't bring the right adapters, right? Correct. And so you couldn't access it to the point that, so that you could take whatever information you could from it, right? That's correct. And you were given unfettered access that first time to get whatever you wanted from that hard drive, right? Yes, sir. This officer here never said, don't do this or don't do that. He never stopped you. <coughs> no, sir. That was, if, if you couldn't do it the first time, that was your fault, right? Um, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, it was your fault because you didn't bring the right adapter, right? I was unaware of which adapter I would need. So you didn't bring the right adapter, right? No, sir. So then you went back a couple of days later, right? Yes, sir. And according to you, that's pretty unprecedented to be given a chance to look at the evidence itself, right? Yes, sir. That's what you testified on direct examination, right? Yes, sir. And you, at that time, did bring the right adapter, right? Yes, sir. And you hooked it up to that uh, hard drive, didn't you? The Toshiba hard drive. Yes, sir. And during the time that you were there, you were there for approximately two hours, weren't you? Yes, sir. And during that time, you actually conducted your analysis, didn't you? Yes, sir. You conducted, you looked at whatever you wanted to look to see if there was any evidence of horror, right? Yes, sir. And then after you were done with that, you took that hard drive back to your office, didn't you? No, sir. You kept it with you, didn't you? No, sir. The hard drive to the, the Toshiba hard drive was left behind, right? Yes, sir. And whatever information you got on it, did you transfer it onto a hard drive? My report? No. The information, yes, you're going to call it the report that you made as a result of your examination. What item did you use? Was it a hard drive? Was it a, it was a flash drive? What was it that you, you stored the information in? I saved the report to my laptop. Then you took the report back and you went to your office, right? Yes, sir. And at some point after that, you did some administrative things to the report, right? Yes, sir. Your report was already done, right? It was uh, all the information from the source evidence was in the report, yes. Everything that you talked about today was already in that report, right? Yes, sir. And, but you, according to you, you um, changed some things on it because of the way that you write or the way that the language is, the computer language, right? I just uh, made additional explanations because I was the one doing the analysis and uh, whoever would be reading the analysis probably doesn't have the uh, technical knowledge that I do. So everything that you testified today from the uh, June 2008 hard drive was already in that report, right? Um, not everything, no, sir. Right? So what you're saying is that you weren't very thorough when you went there back in September 2013, right? The action mischaracterizes the evidence. Overruled. Do you mean answer? Uh, I was, uh, the initial scope of work was a general analysis of the drive for uh, specific topics, and that's what I looked for. And the topics that you were asked about was porn, right? Uh, pornography and the boot up, start up times, and shut down times. And you testified about porn today, right? Yes, sir. And so you had everything back then, in September 2014, that you testified about to today. Yes, sir. Nothing has changed, has it? Um, on the drives? No, on your report and what you told us today. Objection Just mischaracterizes testimony. Overall, to me, answer. Uh, can you ask that again? I'm sorry. Pardon? I didn't hear you. Uh, can you ask that again? I'm sorry. I need that question. Isn't it true that your report contains everything that you testified to today? Not everything. Well, you left some things out then, right? I didn't leave anything out, sir. 
Well, then it isn't as complete as to what you testified today. Objection. Argumentative mischaracterizes his testimony. Overruled. You may answer. I'll say that one more time. I'm sorry. It's not as complete as to what you testified to today. The report is not as complete, no. And, sir, one of the things that happened is that you didn't transfer the report from your computer over to a hard drive, didn't you? Yes, sir. And then you gave that hard drive containing your report over to Brian Neumeister, right? Yes, sir. And you gave it to him in September of 2014, right? Yes, sir. And you have had no contact with this case from September of 2014 until December of 2014, right? That's correct. So between September and October of 2014, you had no contact with this case whatsoever, right? Not that I'm aware of, no. No, you weren't asked to do anything, right? No, sir. You weren't asked to look at any hard drives involving this case in October of 2014, right? I may have been asked some questions about my report in October, but I'm not aware. And in November, the same thing, right? Yes, sir. Your work was done until around Christmas time of 2014, right? Yes, sir. It was after Christmas that you were contacted, right? Like I said, I probably answered a few questions about my report throughout the time between August and now. I'm talking about December. Isn't it true that that's when you were asked to do more work on this case after Christmas of 2014? In December, I was asked to interview for being here, yes, sir. No, my question is, this was after you were asked to interview in this particular case in the first part of January of 2015, weren't you? Objection is to relevance. I don't remember the exact date when I was asked, but it was the end of the holiday season. Right. It was actually January 2nd of 2015 that you were asked to interview, right? Objection. Argues facts, not in evidence, and relevance. Can we approach? You may approach. So in terms of your work, you were only asked to do the work after Christmas of 2014, then, right? I was asked to do the work in August, the end of August. So then why didn't you work in and out of October of 2014? My analysis was sent to be evaluated by who paid me for the analysis. But you didn't do any work, any more analysis in October of 2014, did you? It takes that long for them to read my analysis. Yes or no, did you do any more work in October of 2014? Objection, ask and answer. Overruled. What was your answer? No, sir. Were you asked to do any more analysis or work in November of 2014? No, sir. And with regard to this, you keep telling us, well, I only had 72 hours to look at this, right? Yes, sir. You're saying that, but back in October of 2014, you didn't request it because you were not involved in the case at all. Objection, mischaracterizes the testimony. Overruled. Relevancy with the late disclosure of the 08 drive. You may inquire on redirect. Overruled. Something was said about late disclosure of the 08 drive. Do you remember coming into this courtroom on Monday of this week? Yes, sir. And, in fact, you came in here Monday of this week because you couldn't open that hard drive and somebody from the Mesa Police Department had to show you how to do it, right? No, sir. Objection, mischaracterizes the testimony. May we approach? You may approach. So you came here to the court on Monday, didn't you? Yes, sir. And at that time, right here on this desk, the 08 file was hooked up to a computer, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And it was hooked up to a computer by a detective from the Mesa Police Department, right? I don't know who he was. Well, this individual hooked it up and it was for the purpose of showing you that it actually did work, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And you were then able to verify, because there had been an issue before, that it did work, right? I verified that it worked, yes. And then it was given over to you, right? It was given to the defense, yes. And then it was given over to you to work on it that day, correct? Correct. And so with regard to the information that you found on there with regard to the form, you said that you also looked at the 09 drive, right? 
Just the, the original date in August. Pardon? And the original date in August would be the, the copy of the original source. I'm asking you, you look, got a copy of the 08 drive on Monday in court, right? Yes, sir. And then, before that or some other time, you look at another drive that we're calling that 2009 drive, right? Yes, sir. If we take a look at it, you remember, you said there was two of them? Yes, sir. Is it the 03? Yes, sir. And you look at the 09 drive, right? Yes, sir. In terms of the board between the 09 and the 08 drive, there was no difference at all, was there? There's no difference, no, sir. So whatever you testified to in terms of the port, there was... It would be the same between the 08 and the 09 drive, right? Yes, sir. This information from the... 08 drive, one of the things that you said was that you found that the, the uh, information or the files had been modified back in 2008. You testified to that, right? Yes, sir. And with regard to that, isn't it true that by looking at it, what, that is consistent with the uh, computer being awakened from a sleep mode, isn't it? Yes, sir. So it wasn't a situation that you're saying that somebody willfully, intentionally tampered with it, are you? Uh, as a forensic a analysis, or... Yes or no. That's a yes or no question, sir. Uh, that's... You actually, if you can't answer, yes or no. I can't answer yes or no. All right. Thank you. Next question. With regard to the awakening of the computer, that's an act that is done either by pushing a key, right? Yes, sir. Or if the monitor is down, bringing the monitor up, right? It could be, yes, sir. Pardon? It could be, yes, sir. One of two ways, right? Uh, pressing a button or uh, lifting the monitor. Yeah, yes, that's it. And when it does that, the computer automatically begins the modified file, right? Yes. When was it awakened? Back in 2008. Um, can I have my computer up on the screen, please? I got that on the same day as the 8. The what? On the same day as uh, when I retrieved that on Monday. So somebody gave you the 09 file on the same day? Yes, sir. Just yes or no? Was it a screen or what? No, sir. Oh. Go ahead and tell us uh, when it was awakened. Which image is the question is in question here? On uh, June eighth, June 9th, or June tenth, two thousand and eight, in June of two thousand and eight, give us the day when the computer was awakened.
First file with a modification, uh, 610, uh, 10, 10 26, 44. At what time? Uh, 10, 26, 44, this, uh, number one. Is that Arizona time? Uh, it's Mountain Standard Time. With it. the time for Arizona when he's awake? It's the time on the machine at the time. That's the time of the machine. It has to be a different time, Arizona time. Um, I'm, I couldn't say. If I were looking at a clock back then, on uh, June 10th of 2008, would that clock show the same time that you just talked to me about? Yes. So that is Arizona time, right? Could be, yes. You keep saying it could be. Do you not know? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, it's set at Mountain Standard Time, so I've assumed it is, yes. You assume, which means you don't know. Objection mischaracterizes his testimony. Overruled. You know or not know? You're an expert, right? Yes. Uh, I know it was set on Mountain Standard Time in the Arizona setting, with the Arizona setting. But that's the time it was here in Arizona? Then. Yes, sir. What time were you first contacted about testifying in this case? What date? Testifying? Yeah, about testifying. What Objection as to relevance. Approach. When were we first, when were we first asked to testify? Um, just after a uh, holiday break. I'm not sure which day exactly. For that, you have not been asked to testify at all. No, sir. In terms of the other time that you claim that there was this modification, uh, and you use Exhibit 803, you <coughs> said you went out to the Mesa Police Department and you were able to, on the second visit, you were able to hook up the computer and you said that there was some modifications that you noted, right? Yes, sir. And the modification was on what date? Um, can I have my computer back, please? I noticed both the modifications in 08 and 09, uh, 09 being uh, June of 19. 2009, correct? Yes, sir. What time? Uh, the first uh, file modified at that time is a uh, 155908. 1559, what time is that? Around uh, 4 o'clock. Pardon? About 4 o'clock. No, 1559, what time is that? Um, 4 o'clock. The last file modified was at 230709. So you're saying that this computer back on June 19th of 2009 was turned on at what time again? Which is what time? 3.59 away. Right? Yes, sir. And then what time was it powered off? I can't tell when it was powered off. I can tell you when the last modified file uh, occurred. Do you remember that we had a conversation about this issue? You told me it was approximately 10 minutes later. Do you remember telling me that? Um, I remember the conversation, yes. And you were looking at the same program, right? Yes, sir. Well, why can't you tell me that it's 10 minutes now? Um, I'm I'm looking at my data, and uh, this is what I have on my analysis. From you were looking at the same data when we when I was interviewing you, weren't you? Um, yes, it's a very large data set. I understand that, but you told me it was ten minutes, didn't you? I don't recall the exact time I told you. Do you remember that there was a, a court reporter that was there? 
and that it was taking down how long every word that you were saying. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And do you remember that at that time, at that time, yes or no, do you remember telling me that it was 10 minutes? No, sir. Do you remember telling me it was approximately 10 minutes? I don't remember what time I told you or how long I told you. I just was reading one. But now you're saying that you believe the last modification was what time and what day? On the same day of June 19th, and it looks like the last modification is 230709. Give me that time in terms of? 110709. Yeah, right? Yes, sir. So from how many hours is that? Do the math. And it was? About eight hours. Are you really sure about that? What you're telling me now, are you really sure about that? I am sure as I can see the data, yes. And with regard to you saying, well, there's this modification of data that was involved, you don't know who was present, do you? No, sir. You don't know what the purpose of the meeting was, do you? All I know is it was in possession of the police department at the time. You believe it? How can you possibly say that it was in the possession of the police department? How could you possibly say that? Well, I was told when the crime occurred and when the crime scene became a crime scene, and anything after that, I would assume the evidence stays within the possession of the police department. That's because you're assuming that. But do you know that in cases, you say that you're an expert in forensic cases. Do you know whether or not in this case the defense attorneys actually looked at this? Do you know that or not? Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I sustain the objection. You are to disregard the last question. In addition, I am advising you that in June of 2009, current defense counsel did not represent Ms. Arias. Mr. Martinez, you may continue. Sir, you don't know what happened back on June 19th of 2009, right? I've been told. You've been told? Yes, sir. Somebody has told you what happened on June 19th of 2009? As far as the modification, modified files. Who did you talk to about that? Well, I've been explained to by the defense. Okay. Sir, one of the things that you told me was that at this point, you believe that it was 11 o'clock at night when the computer was shut down. Objection mischaracterized his testimony. He said last update. Sustained rephrase. Isn't it true that you told me that the application ended abruptly at 1609.58? You remember telling me that? I remember telling you when the current application that I was looking at ended, yes. Abruptly, right? Yes, sir. That meant the computer was turned off, right? Not necessarily, no. Objection mischaracterized his testimony. Overall, do you make complete response? It doesn't necessarily mean it was turned off, no. Well, that's what you told me back then. From 1559 to 1609 is when the computer was on, right? Yes, I can verify that it was on at that time. And then it was turned off 10 minutes later. I can't say that it was turned off. I can say that there was no more modified files. I'm not asking you about the modified files. I'm asking you what you told me before. Isn't it true that you told me that the application ended abruptly at 1609.58? Yes. What ended at 1609.58 then? Oh, I can take a look and go back and find that. Wrong one up 
Can you, uh, I'm, I'm where I need to be again. Uh, can you re-ask the question, please? What ended at 1609.58? was, uh, I'm just a, a modified file. I, I, it's actually a part of the file system that was modified. And you indicated to me, as part of that, that that's when the, because of that ending of the modification, that that's when the computer was turned off. Didn't you, do you remember telling me that? Objection, Ms. Characterized this as testimony. Overall, Jimmy, answer. I don't think I would presume that it would be turned off. I think I answered the question by saying that uh, that's the last thing that was modified. And so that was the last thing that was modified at, at 1609.58? Um, I do have uh, a few other things that have been modified past that, but I see the file in question. But, but you're saying, do you remember telling me that, that the last file that was modified was 1609.58? you remember telling me that, yes or no? I remember you giving, time, giving you times for the last modified files. And then we talked about it being 10 minutes, right? Um, yeah, I guess so. So one of the things that you talked about was the visitation by the owner of this uh, computer, the Shiva hard drive, to a porn site, right? Yes, sir. You porn, right? Yes, sir. And it was only one visit, right? Uh, I have evidence of one visit, yes. And so the answer is yes, it was only one visit that we're talking about, right? Yes, sir. And it was a visit to you porn, right? Yes, sir. And you also talk about a search engine called Alexa, right? Yes, sir. They are no longer in business, right? I'm not sure they're no longer a search engine as they were in 2008. So whatever entity they were back then, they're no longer around in that form? Not right? in the same capacity, no. And in fact, one of the things that was going on is that Alexa back then had sites, favorite sites, right? I'm not sure what, what you mean by favorite sites. Well, do you remember that you told me that this u -porn was one of part of 50 favorite, favorite sites? Uh, Alexa. Objection mischaracterizes his statements. Overall, can you answer? Remember telling me that? Uh, uh, can you ask you that one more time? I'm sorry. <coughs> Do you remember telling me at the interview that the U port was part of a selection of sites that Alexa had? Yes, I think I explained Alexa was the yes, referrer. Objection yes. if you can't answer yes or no. Can you answer the question, yes or no? I need to elaborate. Okay. I, I answered that the referrer yes came... Yes or no, was it 50 sites that you mentioned to him? Your Honor? He just said he can't answer yes yeah, or no. Counsel for the state right, has to accept that. Mr. Martinez is moving on. Next question. You told me you mentioned 50 sites during our interview, didn't you? The top 50 list, yes. Top 50 list, right? Yes, sir. And that you porn was part of that list, right? Um, that you porn was... Uh, referred to by that list, yes. Right. In other words, these, this list could include things, for example, Southwest Airlines, right? I don't know. I can't say. You can't say it was an off porn list, can you? No, sir. It could be, for example, that it could be a Home Depot site on there also, right? Sure, yes. And are you positive it was a list of 50 or could it have been more? Well, it's not irrelevant. Overruled. Let me answer. The URL uh, is the only information I can go by in that case, and the URL is uh, listed as being top 50. So you're saying that from what you read, it says a list of 50, right? Yes, sir. But are you saying that that it could be, even though that's what it says, could it be more than the list, be more than 50, or no? Objection, Foundation. Ask and answer. He's already articulated. Overruled. Let me answer. It's a page that, I mean, all I know is that the title of the page was called Top 50. And do you know what number in the Top 50 this you point list was? No, sir. Objection as to relevance. Overruled. No, sir. And in fact, what actually went on is that it may not have even been you point that was listed on the Alexa list, right? No, sir. It had to be you point that was listed on that? Yes, sir. And so it was listed on, and it is in a case where Mr. Alexander actually type in youporn.com or www.porn.com or anything like that, right? The original, original hit that we talked about earlier today came from a referral, as I explained earlier. That means in taking the 
the, the arrow and then clicking on it. That's what we're talking about, right? Yes. <coughs> so that means he didn't actually type anything in to get to that U-porn site, right? I'm assuming he clicked instead of typed on the keyboard. Well, why do you say that you're assuming that? There are, hot, uh, there are hot keys on the keyboard that allows you to uh, click a link as well, not just the mouse. So, so I, all I can do is assume in that case. So it's a click, and you hear that it's a click, right? It's a, it's a follow through, yes, the, the link has been clicked. And then he went and visited this one site one time, right? One time that I know of, yes. That you know of means you're implying that there's some other. You didn't find any other, did you? No, sir. And so, and this visit was approximately 45 minutes, right? Yes, sir. He didn't click out and click in, did he? I'm not sure what that means. In other words, he didn't leave the website and then go back again. Right? I, I don't have that data. It was a continuous visit, right? It seems he to be. He actually asked an answer. He says he doesn't have that data. Overall, do you mean answer? It seems to be, according to the log, that it was a continual uh, a visit. And, sir, um, and then you gave us the names of the videos that were accessed, right? I gave the description of the URLs. And that's. Where, and they, the URL corresponds to a video, right? Uh, I would assume so, yes. When you say that you would assume so, it's because you said you didn't go and check the videos yourself, right? That's correct. And there was, you do have the internet history, and this one, the uh, browser was Fox Mozilla, right? Firefox, Firefox. Made, made by Mozilla, yes. And on June 2nd, and this, this visit was on June 1 of 2008, right? Yes, sir. And then on June 2nd of 2008, you also had history, didn't you? I would have to uh, you know, refer to that. You, you can look at the history. It hadn't been, um, you, there was a history to look at, wasn't there? Oh, yes, sir. Sure. And there wasn't any visit to any porn sites on June 2nd, right? No, sir. And the same thing with regard to June 3rd, right? You have the history, right? Uh, no more history past the first. Pardon? No more history past the first, yes. No, no, but, but you had it to look at on June 3rd, right? Yes. And there were no visits to Uport or anything else that you classified as a porn site, right? Not that I'm aware of. Well, you looked at it, right? I've only had a, a, a few short days to analyze this data. But you looked at June 3rd, right? Well, I can look at it again just to verify. Sure. As far as I know, no, there has not been. And as far as you, you're looking at it right now, right? I'm looking at the web traffic on the uh, at uh, two in the morning and uh, seven in the morning. You can see there is some web traffic uh, represented in green. And you don't find anything, right? In and terms of the part, right? There's only two links, and no, neither of them. The same thing with June 4th. You were able to look at June 4th to see whether or not there were any visits to porn site, right? Correct. There wasn't any, right? No, sir. And if we're doing a mathematical computation, those were four days that you have to look at. June 1, June 2, June 3, and June 4, right? Yes, sir. And it was only one day, it was one day, that he actually went on that, right? There's records of one one day, yes. Yeah, if we're talking about in terms of days, that's 25% of the days, right? Sure. But you don't have any other days to look at to know whether or not he actually went on any porn sites, right? Correct. Because you looked at the history, and according to you, the history isn't there, right? The uh, history.dat file for Firefox starts on uh, 6.1. Right, exactly. Yes. And so, looking back, there is no history for you to look at, right? No, sir. And you, you talked about the cleansers that uh, were involved, right? You talked about that, right? Yes, sir. Uh, aren't, these, isn't, aren't these cleansers also... Anti-virus protectors? Is that what they really are? No, sir. Yeah, mischaracterizes his testimony. Overall, the answer will stand. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with SpyBot SMD, right? Yes, sir. SpyBot SMD is, what is it? What is it? It's a um, scanner for uh, adware, malware. So it's not for, it doesn't protect against viruses? No, sir. So you're saying that SpyBot SMD only protects against malware, right? Yes, sir. And uh, what, what you're saying is that 
That, but doesn't that, when that goes out there, doesn't that clean the, the uh, history? <coughs> isn't that what it does? Uh, is that what SpyBot does? Yeah, isn't that what SpyBot does? cleans, uh, has the capability of cleaning the internet history. Right. And one of the things that you know is that you didn't know Travis Alexander back on June 4th of uh, 2008, did you? No, sir. You didn't know him at all, did you? No, sir. So whatever he was thinking, whatever, if he was running these plans, you don't know what he was thinking, right? No, sir. Because one of the things that happens when people claim their internet history is that it allows the computer to work quicker, right? That's one of the effects of it, right? It could be, yes. Yeah. And in fact, did you know who he worked for? No, sir. Did you know whether or not his work required him to send mass emails? <coughs> No, sir. So, do you know whether or not it was beneficial to his employer to have an internet history that was cleaned out? No, sir. So, you don't know the reason why he may have cleaned this particular part of his computer, do you? No, sir. The other thing, sir, uh, is you talked about the register, right? Yes, sir. And that's different than the internet history, right? Yes, sir. The registry, according to you, also has a history to it, right? It, it can contain historical values, yes. And that's what you talked to us about today, right? Yes, sir. And that's a lot of the listings that you showed us, right? Brought up one of the lists of the registry entries, yes. But what you told us about that was that that history does not contain the internet history, right? That's what you told us, right? That's correct. It doesn't contain the internet, the internet history from Explorer, I think. That was one of the uh, browsers, right? It doesn't contain the logs that the browsers generate. Right. So it doesn't contain the history, for example, generated by the U-form that you talked to us about, right? Uh, no, sir. It, it doesn't contain that. Those are external, if you will, that's out in the internet. It doesn't contain that in that, in that registry history, right? Not in that place, no. No. They, but that's the place that you looked at and that you talked about, right? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, the history that you showed us, I mean, you talked to us about the registry history, that's the history that I'm talking about. That's the history that's built into the operating system. It's built into the system, right? Yes, sir. And when you say that these terms were searched, if those terms were searched, that search was internal inside of the computer, right? Uh, he actually mischaracterizes his testimony. Yeah. Nonsensical question. Overall, you may answer if you can. Um... Yeah, I'm not quite sure that makes sense. Can you... if it's, not going, it's not going out to the internet to search those things. That's what you just told us, right? No, that's not, that's not true. It, it has the ability to go on that. But that's, so you're saying that these terms that you showed us from the registry, you can tell us that that was actually an internet search? Um, I, I can't tell you yes or no on that. All I can say is that it is a search through that search bar. It was a search. But, it, but you can't say that that was a search outside of the computer, right? In other words, to the internet, can you? No, sir. But I would assume if someone was searching for a dot-com, they would be trying to get to the internet. That's what you're assuming, though, right? But you don't know, right? I don't know of any software that uses dot-com extensions on a local machine. But you're telling me, as you sit here today, that you don't know if that's a search of the internet. That's what you just said, right? I, yeah, I, yes. And so what you're saying then is with regard to the registry, the search that was done, it could be, what you're saying is, is that he was searching his own computer for those sites, right? That doesn't necessarily make sense as I do not know of any local files that use the .com extension. And it doesn't make sense, if, and it does make sense though, if these cleansers or antivirus protectors, anti malware protectors, if they, the way they work is they have certain sites that they protect against, don't they? Yes, sir. And in fact, those sites could be pornographic sites, right? Yes, sir. And they could place those names on the registry, couldn't they? But, uh, yes, but not in the historical search registry. So Part you're saying that absolutely not, they could not put it there, right? Um, uh, uh, Malware and viruses can absolutely uh, overwrite information to the registry, um, but like I said, that would be counterproductive to a virus to be leaving uh, tracks behind in things like the registry. But though, but the programs that fight the viruses 
They have to identify the virus, don't they? That's correct. And they identify words, right? Yes, sir. So, for example, Spybot Search and Destroy has hundreds of thousands of sites that it has designated, right? I don't think Spybot does that. You don't believe that Spybot goes out there and says, this is something that the computer has to be wary about? Spybot Search and Destroy doesn't block Internet traffic at all. I'm not saying that it blocks Internet traffic. I'm saying it identifies. That's what I said, identifies. Spybot, it's kind of a technical explanation on how Spybot works, but Spybot uses hashed values, known hashed values, to find malicious software. So it's kind of different than... And those hash values are associated with certain words, aren't they? Well, they're fingerprints only. They have no association with words other than the exact links. But these other plungers, you said that it identifies hundreds of thousands, doesn't it? Spybot Search and Destroy, doesn't it? Hundreds of thousands of... Hash values, it doesn't do that? It has a dictionary of malicious software that it takes a look at. And you're saying that it doesn't use words, then, right? No, it uses hash values. And Zilog doesn't use words either? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, we were talking about hash values here, and the way the other plungers, they don't use names either, is what you're saying, right? Zilog is not a plunger, so it's a virus. I'm asking you about the other plungers. Okay. The other plungers, they don't use names? It just does not make sense to me, sir. Well, with regard to the history, the registry history, isn't it true that you can't say that those are associated with any internet search? I'd have to... The history in there is definitely associated to a search, and that's all I can say. Not an internet search, right? You can't say that? No. Can you direct? Sir, in terms of this issue about the searches on this computer, specifically in the registry, you were asked a bunch of questions about the searches in the registries and the hash values, so I want to start asking you some questions about that, okay? You were asked, well, and actually, can we go to... Can you take us back to the registry that we were at earlier? Sure. Let's see, can you... I think, was the last screen you had, was that the kind of readable version? Yeah, I'll pull it down to here. Okay. Okay. We had... Let's go down... Okay, let's use 4861, 100 sexlinks.com, okay? This is an example. I want to use that to illustrate the point, and if it's somehow inappropriate, you tell me so. Okay. One of the things you were asked a few moments ago was this idea, well, these were searched through the computer, not the internet browser. We talked about that this morning, and you were just asked a few minutes ago, well, doesn't that search, that internal search, if you will, somebody could be searching on their computer, not out onto the internet, right? Yes. And you talked about how .com, you didn't know of any internal search engine that used the .com registry, or maybe registry is not the right word, but what would the .com be, designation? Usually, if we're talking about a file, a .dot, anything would be the extension at the end of the file describing what type of file it is. A .com is a website that's not a known file extension. So a computer wouldn't have .coms in it, like maybe there'd be a Word file or something like that? No, sir, unless it was like a copy of a web page or something like that locally. And that gets to my point, then. 
One way, if, if the user, Mr. Alexander, had copied uh, 100sexlinks.com and internalized that on his computer, that could be an explanation for why he was searching internally, right? Yes, sir. So some of these things that we saw earlier, some of the teen sex and things could have been so valuable to him that he put them on his computer so he could search in that way. Objection, lack of foundation, so valuable. Overall, Jimmy, answer. Um, the, there, that's, that search bar is, um, I, I guess it's the most convenient search for the operating system, so. But, but what you're saying is m way more than likely related to the idea that it was a web search, but if it was, if it was somehow internal search on the computer, somebody had to place it there. Like, for example, take a screenshot of teensex.com and put it on their computer, or or using our uh, using a hundred sex links.com and put it on their computer. In in this history file, it would have had to either be uh, copied and pasted or um, partially typed in and then auto completed. Okay. All right. Now, there was some discussion too about uh, Spybot uh, search and destroy and what it does and how it works and, and names it could put, have, have put on the computer. So this, for example, the supposition was, well, Spybot could have put on 100sexlinks.com, 100 using our example. Um, you were explaining that those, those type of programs use hash values, not words. And could you explain the difference, what we're talking about? Spybot has, or uh, uh, many of these scanning programs have uh, a dictionary, essentially, of, of definitions of malware and viruses. Um, all malware and viruses can be hashed and create, uh, fingerprints can be created by those. Um, there are databases online and as well as scanners that um, aggregate those uh, fingerprints uh, for antivirus softwares, uh, software to um, put into their dictionaries to search for. Well, I guess my question for you maybe in more, in more simplistic terms, if you will. Maybe I didn't do a very good job articulating my question. But you were asked, well, don't these anti-malware, anti-virus programs put these lists of sites that you're not supposed to go to, don't they put those on the computer? They could put them on a computer, like a firewall or a blacklist is what they would be called. But do they put the words or do they put the hash value to, pre to prevent it from going in access? Well, the software, um, all the software, uh, all the scanners or malware or viruses will have, uh, like I explained how Firefox works earlier, a, a profile folder. Whereas uh, when you install a piece of software, it installs to a single place. So it doesn't just scatter it all over the computer and and uh, kind of lose where the files are. Normally when you install a program, it installs to a place that you select it to be installed to. So finding um, lists like this outside of in the installed programs area is very easy to determine that that's not a blacklist or something like that. Okay, so going back to what you said then, if, if somebody takes Spybot, search and destroy, puts it on their computer, puts it on their they would put that, I take it, uh, on their operating system. Is that yes, sir. accurate? Okay. So they put that on their operating system. Going back to the file we're talking about, the registry file, uh, would that show up on their registry file? Would the SpyBot? Well, yes, yeah, so all these terms that SpyBot says don't go to uh, onlineguard.com. Right. Is that going to show up in the registry? You can almost think of the registry, like I explained earlier, as a book. And um, it's almost like a family history book where there's a, a lot of uh, different topics in the registry. And you can go through the registry uh, according to that. In the area that we are looking at here is just the history of the search bar. There's a lot more to the registry than that. There's all sorts of other things that are stored in the book. We're just at that section in the book that shows what was put into the search okay. uh, tab. So in that regard, then, when we talk about the search bar and, every, and exactly what, what is going on, it sounds to me like what you're saying is that uh, there may be 
spy bot at some point in time or some section of the registry may put sites, preventative sites or block sites onto the system, correct? Beyond the system, yes. Okay, beyond the system. But what we have here in terms of the registry file that you've examined is we have searches, simply limited to searches, not the whole registry, but just the searches. Correct. And that is why you, you feel like you can articulate with confidence that these were terms that were searched. This section of the registry is just the history of the search bar. Now, in terms of you were asked about, well, uh, you don't know what Mr. Alexander did for a living or why it might be advantageous for him to, to clean his, his work files, that sort of thing. Do you remember being asked that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, one of the things we talked about with these cleaner programs uh, is the idea that it simply affected one browser, not the other. Is that accurate? Once again, these cleaner programs have a lot of options, and they have uh, there's a lot of ways to set it up to clean. That you can tell it to clean certain areas. Okay. Yeah. And I think I asked that question poorly, but but we don't see any evidence of any cleaner programs or any history being wiped out on the Internet Explorer side of things. Is that correct? Um, no, there's definitely uh, the the cleaners that run there. There are. Um, remnants of internet history as well, but most of the internet cache and stuff like that were all wiped out okay. via a cleaning program. Via what? Yeah, via a cleaning, you know, cleaning application. Well, and then that begins the question, well, okay, there could be some purposes to it, but let's say we're using, you know, you were asked specifically this idea, well, you know, what if someone had a job and they had to send out uh, mass emails? mass marketing emails uh, to people and they would need a cleaner to, to do that. Um, is, does that make sense given that the, the email systems are web-based and not internal to the computer? Regardless of if the email was web-based or if it was on Outlook, um, the internet history as we are viewing it does not store the messages of the emails, just stores um, the time of visit to the email service, whether it's um, connecting to the Outlook server or the Gmail service or something like that. And you were also asked about that idea uh, in terms of the concept of, uh, well, performance, keeping your performance because you're sending out these mass marketing emails. You've already heard how that's irrelevant. But what about the this idea that, well, these cleaners uh, they help keep your computer running. That's that's accurate, right? Or keep your your computer running better, assuming they do what they're supposed to. That's accurate, is it not? Yes, that's the claim, the marketing claim from the producers of these software. Yes. But when we're talking about what you have described as periodic and consistent use, is that something different? Um, in terms of how... Well, periodic and consistent use of these scrubbers or cleaner programs, all those ones we saw in here. Right. Um, it, it's an unusual amount of, uh, of cleaning and, and uh, post-processing, I guess you could call it, using these uh, software. You said post-processing? Just uh, after, uh, after usage running the cleaners uh, fairly regularly. When you were asked about um, the work you did and what the work you began doing uh, back in August of 2014. Yes, sir. And you were specifically asked about your trip uh, to the Mesa Police Department and the access you had to this piece of that. Yes, sir. I want to start talking about that, going back to uh, diagram 803.
going back to 803 for a minute here, uh, that first day that you go to the Minnesota <coughs> Police Department, you're looking at this. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. What you called earlier, what you called the source evidence. Yes, sir. Now, when you were looking at this source evidence, uh, you were asked about your access. Uh, did you know at that time uh, anything about it, anything that might have taken place in June of 2009? What other prior images might have been taken, anything of that nature? Uh, when I first got called for the uh, job and, and given the scope of work, I was told there was a forensic image for this uh, hard drive. I was not told about the case or any details about the case or anything like that. So all I knew was there was a forensic image uh, uh, created. Uh, yeah, I was unable to obtain that and then was giving, given access to Mesa Police Department to obtain my own report. Okay. Get, getting a little more specific to my question though, sir, is that in terms of the images, looking at this chart, in terms of the image, Mm -hmm. that you knew existed, copies. Yes, sir. Kind of the equivalent of what we might call copies. Did you know that an image had been made by the Mesa Police Department before, in 2008, before you looked at the Toshiba image in 2014? No, sir. And the same question as it relates to the 09 image, or the modifications, do you know what did you know at the time that you were looking at this in 2014 that modifications had taken place in 2009? Uh, once I ran the analysis, it was uh, very clear there's a year gap of non use, it, it sticks out in the timeline, as you can see. But my question specifically dealt with initially when you, yeah, I, in, did, you I did know, not, hey, there were some modifications. I was not told that any anything had been modified past the initial point of uh, the evidence going into um, into the possession of the Mesa PD. And we talked about that possession of Mesa PD. Um, you are making the assumption that this was in the hands of Mesa Police Department since the point in time in 2008 when they uh, confiscated this Objection, lack of foundation, and if we may approach. You may approach. <coughs> and sir, getting back to my question then, you're making the assumption that um, once this became a crime scene, 2008, that the Mesa PD, Mesa Police Department, uh, exercised dominion and control over the evidence. So that's where you went to do it, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you were asked about um, the modification. Uh, of these drives. The pornography was on all three drives, correct? Yes, sir. So these 2,400 modifications... I, I like to correct you, not the pornography, but the history of the, the pornography. The history, yes, thank sir. you, sir. Yes. Um, I want to go back. Could you go back to uh, what you were showing earlier regarding uh, June 19th uh, and the modification. Okay. Okay. Now we have the the twenty three seventy nine. That was the. Uh, amount of files that were changed, modified? Yes, sir. Okay. And I want to get real specific here because uh, in terms of modifications of what happened that day, first of all, you weren't there on that day, correct? Okay. 
But in terms of this number, this 2,300 uh, files that were modified, let me ask you a little bit, based on your, based on your experience and uh, handling of, of data or computer evidence, now, I'm not asking in the forensic setting, but in general in terms of protocol related to making sure, ensuring the data is not modified. Okay. Yes, sir. First of all, I guess we should step back and say, is ensuring that data is not modified, is that a big deal? Is that important at all in the computer, for, or in the computer analysis? Absolutely. Okay. How so? Um, when, uh, when an incident occurs, uh, typically in a corporate environment, and I have a lot more experience in that world, um, there will be a, a chain of command assigned to the assets and the assets will have what's called access control, meaning anyone who has access to the, uh, to the source information that has the incident um, has to check in and check out all of their access to that um, at all times. Okay. Well, well let, me, let me break that down a little bit, because that sounds to me more like a, and when you're talking about assets, we might have shifted our verbiage from away from source to asset. Are we talking about the same thing, the source evidence versus the asset? Um, um, access is what no, I said? No, asset, I thought you said. I'm sorry, maybe oh, I Oh, um, yeah, I don't remember how I used that word. Okay, okay. <laughs> let, let, let me back up then. Um, because we talked, you recall, we talked about a right blocker and how that prevents alteration. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, would, would proper preservation of data on a piece of of computer media, be it a phone, be it a computer, anything. Okay, you with me so far? Yes, sir. I haven't used any incorrect words. Oh, that's great. Right, great. And so, is, does does proper data data preservation uh, does that require or uh, dictate that you use some sort of means to make sure that twenty three hundred seventy nine files aren't modified? Absolutely. If um, if I turned a computer on uh, during an access control evaluation, I'd probably be fired and sued. So, in terms of what happened, and when we talk about modification, what, well, let me ask you this: Why is that such a sin, if you will? Why is it so severe? You talk about you get fired, you get sued. Why is it so severe? Um, it's uh, when you're trying to. Uh, reverse engineer or, or figure out uh, the initial problem, uh, the complications of modified files can um, uh, hamper the investigation and, uh, and lead you down the wrong path. Okay. So, is it surprising to you then that a computer that is in the dominion of control that makes a police department, that that was, well, let's, let's backtrack then, that that was uh, altered on June 10th, 2008, by an individual work for the New Mexico Department. That'd be surprising to you? Yeah, not just that, but that all three images had been modified in a one way or another. That there was not actually a, a source that we knew hadn't been modified close to the point of it becoming evidence. Okay. And, and I really want to make sure we understand this, the sin of, of modification as well, because um, data that is modified, um, is that data that can be, data can be deleted when it's modified? Usually when it's modified, it's been overwritten, um, whatever was there. When, when we say modified, it, it, it most of the time means it's been overwritten on top. New data has overlaid on top of it. Um, if it's not overwritten, it would be unallocated. It, it's empty space now according to the operating system, but it still uh, maintains integrity on the drive. Well, let's, let's talk about overwritten and its relationship to being deleted. Yes, sir. Okay? Because if, and I don't know, maybe you can think of a better example, but if something is overwritten, if a program, say for instance, I guess programs would, would update them. Is that what we're talking about? Like in Windows, a system I update. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so when it updates, when the system updates itself, and over, does it overwrite things? It can't overwrite things. 
Yes, yes. So that original thing that gets overridden, mm -hmm. is that basically destroyed? Well, yeah, the area of the hard drive, it's called a block. A hard drive is built into blocks, and the data is stored within those blocks. And it's almost like an address, a home address. You can, you, you could uh, ask me to look up block numbers 49,000, and I could bring up what file was sitting in that block. Okay. So, um, you know, whatever it was in that block, if it was modified or overwritten, it would be uh, very hard to recover. And, and probably impossible. Because okay. it's really in its in its pure form, it's been destroyed. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And at the very least, it's been altered or modified by the uh, by the updates. Sure. Yes. You can't tell what it was before the update attached. Correct. Okay. You can't revert it. I'm sorry. It can't be reverted. <laughs> or extracted. Reverted is that is is that unless you way of saying it can't be uh, put back to what it was before? Is right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So whatever the state of affairs was, sir, it sounds like you're telling me with these 2,379 files, you, uh, in all your experience and knowledge and skill, can go back and reverse reverse the damage that was done, so to speak, or the alterations, deletions, and modifications that were done. Is that? Okay. Now, you <coughs> asked about uh, the time you had uh, with the 2008 drive and what occurred with the 2008 drive, correct? Yes, sir. Um, and you were taught, uh, you were told about a Well, you, you were brought, I just, an encounter was brought up that occurred on Monday with a detective from the Mesa Police Department. You recall that? Yes, sir. Discussion? Okay. In terms of that encounter, did you ever, you yourself, before that individual was here, get to that hard drive and attempt to start it up and fail to do so? Uh, no, sir. When you got here, um, had this individual from the Mesa Police Department um, began doing some things to this drive? Yes, sir. And you were here to verify its function? Yes, sir. Is that right? Okay. And in terms of function, meaning your ability to analyze, make sure that it works for you to do your report? Correct. So it was at that point in time on uh, Monday, or when we were done speaking on Monday, that that's when you began to have the ability to do your work. Yes, very short amount of time here. And that was your first time that the defense was able to provide that to you. Yes, sir. Objection, lack of foundation. Approach. Sir, as it relates to this image, the image made the image made in 2008. Yes, sir. When you went in 2014, you weren't aware of this image. We talked about that moments ago. Do you recall? Yes. And. But you became aware later on with your research that this image was made on June 11, 2008. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And are you aware of the fact that that was not provided to the defense until December of 2014? Objection, lack of foundation. Overall, Jimmy, answer yes or no. Yes, sir. 
and you were thusly given the uh, piece of evidence once its functionality was verified on Monday of this week. Correct. And in that regard, as you said uh, earlier in your testimony, uh, that had you had more time with this drive, this piece of evidence, you could have found even more pornography, correct? Objection, lack of foundation, speculation. Could have found more. Distinct. You could find more. Have you had more time with this drive as a piece of evidence? My, my tip. Could you find more data? My typical analysis, I require 10 to 14 days. Um, I was uh, asked by the uh, uh, by this court to uh, expedite my process and uh, did everything I could to uh, um, evaluate as much as I could in the short amount of time I've had the evidence. And you've endeavored to do that as best you can? Absolutely. In terms of the difference between 48 hours or whatever, whatever exact minute it was, and those, you said 10 to 14 days? Yes, sir. What kind of data would you expect to find, or what kind of data would you be able to search for in those subsequent days that you typically have to drive? Uh, as I'm doing a live analysis here, it's uh, pretty much on the fly and, um, and uh, um, you know, kind of off the cuff, whereas uh, after a 10 or 14 days of, of analyzing this data, uh, creating um, flow charts and understanding the way um, different data relates to itself, I can uh, paint a much, a much uh, more understanding picture of the data set that I'm working with. You say understanding, what, is, what does that mean? Um, kind of the tip of the iceberg, you know, I, I'm looking for uh, keywords in a, in a situation and the uh, quickest, easiest ones to find are the ones that I've uh, brought in and presented here. You say uh, looking for keywords, what does that mean, like pornography or porn or, or, or those sort of things? Or sure, keywords are um, um, very encompassing, just uh, uh, typically looking for things that it, in an analysis that I would be looking for uh, in porn would be some of those keywords, yes. As it relates to, for this particular job? Correct, right? yes. Your Honor, I believe. Council approach for a moment, please. Please return on Monday at 9.30. Monday at 9.30. Please remember the admonition. Are there any questions? Thank you. Have a nice weekend.